In case you're just joining us this morning, I'm spending some time talking with the author of Letter from the Sandbox, Charles Meyer. Charles, again, thank you for being on the show this morning. You're welcome. I'm having a great time. Well, good. well I'm having a good time, too. And now, before we went to break, Charles, you were talking about the life-changing experience that you had where an IED actually blew off your leg. Um, yeah, well, you could say it's a life-changing experience. Uh, October 11th at 11, 11 a.m., I was working in an area named Northern Decreed. is actually the home of Saddam Hussein at one of the uh, tank bases. Uh, we came under an attack. What we did was we got the client, tell it would be the people who worked for us out of there, cleared the area, and then we had to go back into the area to retrieve about 500 pounds of C4. We weren't going to let the quote-unquote bad guys take that and make IEDs for you know everybody across Iraq. So that was one of the major missions that we went to. Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, depend how you view life, I guess, mm -hmm. I sat right on top of a 155 round and got punched off by a, uh, by a guy. What happened, I was in an up-armored F-350 pickup, and because it was up-armored, it took most of the hit rather than I did because a 155 round is basically made to take out tanks. And uh, it ripped through the bottom part of the truck, through the transmission, and caused a compound tib fib fracture, separating my lower leg. Um, the first thing that I remember after the dust was settling in super slow motion was seeing the bottom part of my foot in my crotch. Mm. And I remember thinking, well, that's not right, and that's going to hurt later. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I can't <laughs> even imagine. But I will say that this whole thing, Charles, you, you know, there was a purpose for you because you survived something like this. And, and one of those purposes is to write the book that you have written, Letters from the Sandbox. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to agree with you. The Letters from the Sandbox was kind of my salvation. And it didn't start out at the beginning. I had no intent of writing a book. The Letters from the Sandbox book is a compilation of all the letters that I actually wrote home to my friends and family. So the book itself is unedited and rough. Um, it is very politically incorrect. If you were ever a soldier of any type, you'll get it immediately. Um, if you have ever wondered what it was actually like to live and work in a war zone, you'll get it immediately. That's, that's the way I... I wrote it. It sounds just like I'm talking to you. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the people who've read my book, who I've talked to, they, they'll tell me, it's like you're whispering in my ear, I can't get your voice out of my head. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they, find it, they find it very raw, informative, and funny at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a good time doing it. And like I said, it was, it was kind of my salvation. It gave me something to do. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine actually asked me while I was recouping, he said, uh, you going to ever finish your book? And I said, yeah, well, once I get all the emails together. Mm -hmm. And he goes, uh, he handed me a, a shoebox. He goes, here's all your emails, now get off your ass. And, and do it. And do it. Mm -hmm. and, and basically that's, that's what it took. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For you to, to write this book. Right. And now we were talking a little bit before the interview, Charles, and you were saying how this leg injury, this has not held you back in any way. Uh, it gave me a brief moment of, uh, of levity to realize that I'm not Superman anymore. Um, but I do everything that I used to do. Mm -hmm. uh, practice Aikido, uh, a skydive, scuba dive. I spear, I'm an avid spear fisherman. I run charters out there. Um, and the only thing I'm not doing is running a marathon. And mostly that's because the prosthetics can't keep up with me. That is what I, that I, that is what I found. As far as a prosthetic user, I'm at the high end of the spectrum uh, in the weight class because I'm 300 plus pounds. So they just aren't making them that big. I've broken prosthetics, you know, when I started out, had them less than a week and, you know, snapped them because my prosthetics will say, they just don't make them big enough for you. Mm -hmm. But because of all the, uh, the amputees that are coming back, people with, you know, disabilities, the prosthetic companies are forced to evolve and they have so much in the last 10 years that it's starting to catch up. And I, I believe that one of the reasons that I'm still sitting here is to talk to people who have, uh, who have amputations, mm -hmm. uh, the kids coming back, to show them, hey, you can do whatever you want to do, just put your mind to it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. 
yeah, you might you might not be running, you know, a marathon. I have a very good friend of mine who's a double amputee, uh, Chris Corbin. He's running five to seven minute miles with no legs. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. So you're yeah. giving these people inspiration is what you're doing. Hopefully I am. Uh, you know, if I can if I can go out and make one person who had, you know, an amputation injury and look forward and go, well, that fat one-legged guy can do it. I can do it too. And that's, you know, that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. it, you know, just, it's the ability to show people, hey, quit whining. Mm -hmm. So what? You stubbed your toe. I'm missing a leg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, during, during my rehabilitation, I had a guy come in uh, and he had a pulled hamstring, something obnoxious. Like I said, weird stuff happened to me. <laughs> and he was uh, looking at me, telling oh my God, my hamstring hurts. What are you in here for? I blew up my leg. <laughs> His problem was very small yeah. compared to what Instantly, he's like, all right, well, I'm good. I'm done talking <laughs> to you. I guess, you know, I can't whine about a pull hamstring That's to somebody right. who ain't got a leg. I'm like, right. no, you can't. Well, well, you're a survivor and a hero, and I thank you for talking with me this morning, sharing your book. If you want more information on Letters from the Sandbox, you can check out the website. Your website Lettersfromthesandbox.com. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. uh, it's on Amazon. It's on, just Google it. It's there. Okay. So. The website's on the bottom of the screen along with Charles' number. Thank you again, Charles, You're for being welcome. with me this morning. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be right back after these messages. Please stay with me.